Marshall, Will, and Holly on a routine expedition. Met the greatest earthquake ever known. High on the rapids, they struck their tiny raft. Plunge them down a thousand feet below to the land of a lost Viewers of Wasteland TV, we are here with Wesley Ewer, Land of the Lost, Will Marshall, and Dragon Mike Tales, and, and Mike Borton. Borton on Days of Our Lives. That's who my mom remembered you as when I'd watch Land of the Lost <laughs> as a kid. She would watch it because you know that's Mike Borton on Days of Our Lives. I know. So in the morning, uh, they're both NBC shows. So in the morning, uh, I would film all my scenes on in, 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 uh, in Days of Our Lives. And all the cast hated me because I got to leave early. And then I'd go to the set of Land of the Lost in the afternoon for three years and, and go. So in the morning, I'm crying that my girlfriend is leaving me. In the afternoon, I'm going, run, Holly, run, there's a dinosaur. <laughs> so, a little schizophrenic. So did you have to carry both costumes, with one costume or the other costume no, with you? No, no, no. Well, on Days of Our Lives, back in the day, their budgets were different. I, you had to wear your own clothes. They gave you a, a few dollars for it. But I'd bring whatever I wanted to wear that day. So you were dressed as uh, Will a lot of the days. No, no, because I could. Those were real costumes. I couldn't take them out. Oh wow! You know. So what's the story with Will changing? Uh, this is always was, I always thought it was interesting. Is in the first season he has a blue shirt, then he changes to the tan shirt like his father. Yes. And then in one episode in the, th in the second season he goes back to a blue shirt. Right. And then back to the normal color. Well, what happened was. We had the largest chroma key soundstage, which it's green screen today. Oh, yeah. It was, it was blue back in the day. And it was huge. It was the whole side of a soundstage and the floor. And that's where they would superimpose us with the dinosaurs. Well, it was chroma key blue. And the blue shirt would chroma key out and disappear. And so they had to put a, a, a tan shirt because... At first, I thought they did their first patch was make you were you're seeing, okay, the dad is neat, Holly's neat, why is Will dirty? <laughs> exactly. No, but it, it was because because they couldn't use the chroma key set with it. So, how did you like working with uh, Spencer Mulligan? Oh, he was great. And he calls me about once a week and goes, Wesley, this is your papa calling. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll talk about politics. And He's a great guy. I, I love Spencer. So, he just had a birthday. I think he's 80-something. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. How about uh, Deidre Hall? I was reading about that, that you helped her get her job from I, Electra well, Woman. Deidre and was uh, an, an elect a dining girl in Electra Woman. Yes. And so she came to me. I was on the set of Land of the Law. She said, Wesley, you're on Days of Our Lives. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, I'm auditioning for the role of, of Marlena, Dr. Marlena. And, and I said, I know what they're looking for. And so we worked on her sides, which are the, the lines she had to do for the audition. And not that I got her the part, because she's so talented, but, it, it, you know, she's been on to this day. Yeah, she's a, she was a soap legend as yeah. a character. Yeah, it's amazing. Which is surprising. It's amazing to be old enough to be a legend. No, get a Barbie doll. <laughs> it's true, that's true. You know, when you see her and Erica Kane getting Barbie dolls, yes. you know, that's legendary for soap operas. My favorite Barbie doll coming out, I just saw it, was Day of the Dead. Uh, the, I saw the Mexican. that. Because I live in Mexico six months out of the year. Oh, wow. And so uh, I love Day of the Dead. Is it because it makes the sleeve stack, uh, keeps their complexion good? It does, it does. I, I like to, in front of my yard, so we make sure that they're in the sun, sun bleached. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I asked Holly about this, the change of the writings each season. Did you, did you think uh, that affected the show in any such way? Well, we had such great writers the first season. David Gerald, Walter Koenig. Uh, yeah, Chekhov. season one you had... Basically, almost an entire writing or Nebula, Star Trek or Nebula staff exactly. writer. Exactly. And then I think I, you know they, they had a falling out with David or whatever, and they you know had different writers come in, and you know it, it always goes downhill once the, the original. Yeah. Leave. And then the season two wasn't yeah. bad because right. you got to see the characters evolve, which was right. nice, like art, like archaeology, uh, anthropology. Right. And, you know, you knew they were stuck there. You didn't know how long, but you see that they started uh, building a, a life there building you know an environment right. Right. and then it seems to me they just threw it all away with the earthquake 
Well, there was a reason. How come? The set burned down. Oh, really? I did not know that. We shared the caves with Sigmund the Sea Monster. Oh, okay. And the first day of shooting of Sigmund the Sea Monster that season prior, the set caught on fire. Everybody was just getting ready for their first shot of the day. The whole sound stage burned, all the cars burned, and our caves were all gone. I did not know that. I always thought they did it just because they wanted to change nope. setup. It was the, they all got burned down. Wow. That is really sad. Yeah, it was. Because it's like you would have... And, and Rip Taylor, who played the genie in, in, uh, in Sigmund, he was in his green makeup, the flippers, the green outfit. His wallet, everything was burned. So he says he had to, his car was burned. He had to go from Goldwyn on Santa Monica Boulevard to his condo way in West Hollywood. He said he walked down Santa Monica Boulevard with all the green makeup, flopping around. He says not one person gave him a second look. Because <laughs> it, was, it was Hollywood. And probably they knew what show he was on. Yeah, exactly. And they were probably sitting. Should we ask him for an autograph? Yeah, yeah. The, what's that green genie doing? Yeah. What's a genie from uh, yeah. <laughs> Sigmund and Sea Monster doing out here? Right. But what was your favorite episode you did? I like the circle, where it was an episode where Enoch, in the time doorway, there's a. An the anomaly. final episode of season one. Right. And Enoch says, three must leave and three must enter. I go, Enoch, you mean we can go home? He goes, no. You must go home. Otherwise, the universe will explode. So we leave, and we have to come back in. Because uh, I, I thought it was like the end of the show. It was a good ending. That okay, I did, too. That yeah. it's like you could tell the other writers were leaving. Yes. Or and listen, I hate to cut this short. I hate to, but we've got oh. the, the other cast members, uh, Chaka and Holly, are yelling at me to come over. We have some fans that I need we're to do this. Oh, what? Uh, Chaka, shut up. Chaka, behave. Oh, Ganza Bisasa Chaka. No, you need Chaka's paddle. Chaka paddle, yeah. <laughs> so what a pleasure meeting you. All right, thank you for the, thank for, you. For the interview. Ian. My pleasure. Thank you so much. I hope I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. When I look all around, I can't believe the things I found. Now I need to.